Obviously, one of your biggest things is portraying your self-confidence, not just in your personal life, but also in your professional life. So can I ask, what do you think the impact and the importance of that is on a day-to-day -day basis, but then just throughout your life as a whole? I want people to understand this, that everything is energy, right? Everything is energy, this pen is energy, I'm energy, the air is energy. And so human beings will perceive energy. And I'm sure that each one of you here, whether you've been in a meeting room or in a party and you see somebody walking in, as soon as they walk in, you can tell if this person believes in themselves, right? If they think highly of themselves or not. Obviously this year has been a really, really tough year for a lot of people. And for many reasons, you know, people are losing loved ones, people are losing businesses. And I think it's quite a hard year to remain self-confident in a lot of ways. So as a coach, with your experience, what kind of advice would you give even at the people listening on this call, for example, for helping them build that confidence throughout this period? This pandemic to me is like it has stripped us, hasn't it? It has stripped us of all, everything superfluous. And so we are forced to be on our own, right? Or with a strict family. Um, and I think it's such a gift because it's an invitation tailored to go within. If you could give someone one tip to living a sort of happier, better life, what would it be? Actually, the easiest thing is to work from the inside out. So I want you to realize, yeah, study yourself, find help, get a coach, you know, a therapist to understand what, what is creating my reality is quite a male dominated industry and it's not often necessarily catered to women particularly so I'd say another fact is a lot of people do get quite intimidated and they don't have the confidence to ask the questions if they don't understand something or if they want to know more. When we look at men and women in terms of the net worth and later on you know in their lives how does that show up then? Honestly the biggest one which is obviously a really hot topic at the moment is probably the pension gap so I don't actually know if a lot of people know this, but statistically, because women don't tend to invest as much as men throughout their working life, by the time we come to retirement, on average, we've got 30% less of a pension pot than men. It's 30%. And the only reason for that is because of the gains missed out through investing on a like-by-like -like basis. We were like, to take your advice and say, okay, I want to start. What what what's the first thing that we would need to do? Start. You know, it doesn't a lot of people get really scared off when you hear kind of wealth management and investments because they automatically think you've got to be super rich. It's not the case. Start at a level you're comfortable with, with someone you're comfortable and confident enough around to be able to ask the questions that you truly don't understand. Be bold dare to be kick cast and i can guarantee you when you're kick cast is when you take the reins of your life you take the reins of your finances you take the reins of your relationship and this is when you can build the life that you really want and deserve yes